Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad in it. Let us offer God a hand clap of praise today. So here we are, March 2024, celebrating what Christians all over the world are referencing as Palm Sunday, the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem. And there's a hymn that we sometimes sing, and if you have any palm leaves or palm branches there with you, as we sing, it sings like this. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him. Highest archangels in glory, strength and honor, give to his holy name. One more time, praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory, strength and honor, give to his holy name. Let's offer God a hand clap of praise to presiding elder Jacqueline Lancaster Denson today and to her husband, the Reverend Willie. L. Denson, and to you, my brothers and sisters of Campbell Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church there in Menta, Alabama, and to all of you who perhaps are out here on social media today. Just a few moments to about that hymn we were just singing, written by a lady named Fanny J. Crosby. It says Miss Crosby was born in 1820. She was well loved and one of the most recognized influential hymn writers in history, of whom it is believed that Miss Crosby went blind at six weeks old, but who memorized the Bible from listening to a Mrs. Hawley who read to her, and she memorized five chapters weekly from age 10, and by age 15, Miss Crosby had memorized the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, even the first five books of the Bible. Ah, huh? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the Pentateuch, and the Book of Proverbs, the Song of Solomon, and many of the Psalms. Let's offer God a hand clap of praise for Miss Fanny J. Crosby. She is credited with writing more than 8,000 hymns of gospel songs. She was a missionary. She was a poet. She was a lyricist. She was a composer. And so the Bible teaches us today to, and commands us even, to rejoice in the Lord always. Over 300 times, the Bible says, the word rejoice is written. And in spite of circumstances, joy, the second fruit of the Holy Spirit, is a gift given to us who have believed that Jesus is the Son of God. And when we invite Jesus to come and live inside of us, we are anointed we are empowered with the oil of joy wherever we are. That's good news today, church. And so today, all over the world, the people of God, either in the wall sanctuaries or in the out of doors, such as I am today, are commemorating, are reenacting the joyful celebration of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem before his being crucified on a cross. Designed for criminals, church, of which we know Jesus was not a criminal. 
Jesus was crucified in exchange for a criminal whose name was Barabbas. And Jesus came to love. Jesus came to save. Jesus came to redeem us from the penalty of death. For Romans 6, 23 says the wages of sin is death. But Jesus came to give us eternal life. We ought to say hallelujah today. That's good news. That is good news. Well, let us turn to God's word that we might further understand why we're celebrating today. That word can be found in the Gospel of Matthew 21, beginning with the first verse. Let us listen that we might hear God. When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, then Yeshua, or Jesus, sent two disciples, saying to them, Go over into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a coat with her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord has need of them, and he will send them immediately. All this was done to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Zechariah, saying, and I quote, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and sitting on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went in that sixth verse and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt and laid their garments on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their garments on the road, and others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went before him and that followed him cried out, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. And when he entered Jerusalem, the entire city was moved, saying, Who is he? The crowd says, This is Jesus, or Yeshua, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. And so, my brothers and sisters, today the thought, the Lord has need of us. And so, as it was said and read, Hallelujah. When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples to go and find a donkey tied and a coat, and to untie them and bring them to him. And if anyone questioned them to say, the Lord has need of them. Hallelujah. And this, as was read, was a prophecy from the prophet Zechariah, who was a Hebrew prophet, who prophesied in the days of Haggai, it is said, and whom it is said wrote the book of Zechariah. And this book was written approximately 500 years, it says, before Jesus was born. Well, let's look at this text why a donkey? Well, it is said riding a donkey symbolized humility and peace. And rather than arriving, hallelujah, on a horse, for it represented war and conquest, Jesus wanted to demonstrate his humility, that he was a peaceful king that he is a peaceful king. Well, someone might want to know, just as I wanted to know, the difference between a donkey and a colt. Well, research says a colt is said to be a young male donkey less than four years of age. A colt 
that is tied is showing that it can easily wander away from its mother. The coat has never been written, it says, and gives the idea of sacrifice or unused, un unused animals, it is said, were used for sacrifice. Well, for me, and perhaps for you too, <laughs> the question, did Jesus ride both the donkey and the colt? Well, I went on to do further research, and it says the journey was long into Jerusalem. And for a young colt to make the journey with a person riding upon its back, would have been harsh. So Jesus, it is said, could have ridden the older donkey first, and then as he got closer to Jerusalem, could have ridden the young colt. Matthew could have also meant that Jesus rode the younger colt while the older donkey walked alongside of them. Well, the them, according to research, is also referring to the cloaks that were placed upon the backs of the donkey. It says that putting on a saddle on a donkey has too much weight for small animals. An average donkey, it is said, can carry up to 50 kilograms or eight stones, it is said, on its back or can pull up to twice its body weight on level ground. Well, the question I ask, and perhaps you might be asking too, <laughs> how did Jesus know where the donkey and the colt would be? My brothers and my sisters, Jesus knew because one, Jesus is God in the flesh. Huh? Jesus knows everything and where every person and where every animal is. For God and Jesus is omniscient. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and all who dwell therein, says Psalm 24 and 1. Well, perhaps you've been celebrating Passover all these years, but never really understanding fully what Passover is about. Well, if you care to know, the Lord has me here today for you. Passover, my brothers and my sisters, is a holiday, a holy day rooted in Jewish history and tradition. It commemorates the liberation of the Jewish people from slavery in Egypt. Passover, it is a time of reflection, a time to express gratitude, a time of celebration. Passover is also a time when Jews remember poverty and hardship that their ancestors endured. Passover is a time to help those who are currently struggling with poverty and oppression. And so it was during this time that they were told to eat unleavened bread, matzah it is called, flour and water without yeast, a symbol of the meager rations eaten during their ancestors during enslavement. Why did God even tell them to eat bitter herbs? And it says that they were to remember the bitterness of their bondage. And so some of those bitter herbs, and we consume them even today, not realizing what they are. Lettuce, hmm? endive, chicory, that sometimes is used in coffee, horseradish. Then there are some from the pea family even, or from the holly plant. There is what's called arugula, some of us eat that. Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, dandelion greens, kale, grapefruit, cranberries, or even mint. So why or what was the purpose of Jesus' entry to Jerusalem? 
My brothers and my sisters, one, it was a fulfillment of prophecy. Two, it was a time of demonstration of the nature of Jesus' kingdom. Well, what purpose was it to demonstrate that Jesus is the Prince of Peace? Can we say hallelujah today, church? Jesus entered the city riding on a donkey, <laughs> a lowly animal to express humility, not upon a horse as ready for war. Why was uh, the entry into Jerusalem an important event? Well, Jesus' entry revealed his identity as the Messiah. Two, his grand entrance into Jerusalem was to fulfill the prophecy of Zechariah. And I quote, tell the city of Zion, look, look, your king is coming to you. Why Jerusalem? My brothers and sisters, Jerusalem has been considered the holiest city in Judaism and the ancestral and spiritual homeland of the Jewish people since the 10th century. Excuse me. Jerusalem is considered the center of the world where God resides. Why Jerusalem? My brothers and my sisters, Jesus came to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover, which is a major seven-day holiday that commemorates the Jewish people's exodus from Egyptian slavery to freedom. As AMEs, huh? African Methodist Episcopal members, huh? or perhaps of other denominations, there are many opportunities for us today to travel to the varied or diverse celebrations, just as Jesus and those who lived during his time. And we today exercise that same mustard seed faith to return annually to meetings and to celebrations exercising the freedom <laughs> of being saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, and the privilege to exercise this freedom. So what lessons can we further learn from Jesus today? My brothers and my sisters, one, we can learn that God is the one true Lord and Savior. For he said, I am the bread of life. Jesus is the lamb, the sacrificial lamb, slain, it says, before the foundation of the world. Romans 12, 1 teaches us to daily present ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing unto God, which is our spiritual worship. Two, my brothers and my sisters, when God looks at us, he looks at us as born again believers, washed in the blood of the Lamb. <laughs> For God sees the precious blood of the Lamb covering us, protecting us, just as it did in those who lived, lived before us. And they were told to, to slay a lamb and to place its blood over their doorways that the death angel would not touch them. Three, the bitter herbs in the Passover ceremony symbolize the bitterness of slavery from which God rescued the Jews. And so as followers of Jesus the Christ, we were once slaves to sin, but Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, rescued us from slavery and sin. Jesus the Christ, church, rescued us from slavery and sin. Why? To enjoy freedom through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So the Passover, the Hebrew word Pesach, the seven-day holiday, holy day, 
that commemorates the Jewish people's exodus from Egyptian slavery to freedom. Jeremiah 31, 33 says to us today, church, I will put my law within them and write it in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. 34, they shall teach no more every man, woman, boy, girl, or his neighbor, and every man, his brother or sister, saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me. <laughs> From the least of them, glory to God, to the greatest of them, says the Lord God Almighty. And then he went on to say, For I will forgive their iniquities, those things they willingly and knowingly do that will separate them from me. But I will remember their sin no more. That's good news, church. And so let us praise our Heavenly Father today, church. Rather than our sins being held against us, God forgives us completely. That's good news this Palm Sunday morning. Jesus' death on the cross some 2,000 plus years ago brought us to a new covenant, a better covenant that we will see in its fullness when the Jewish people return to God in repentance and embrace Jesus, the Messiah. And for us, the word says to us, when we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9 and 10, if we confess our sins, he, Jesus, is faithful and just, righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar that is not in us. And so, like those who live before us, my sisters and brothers, God's chosen people, we as the church of the living God have passed over <laughs> from death to eternal life. <laughs> we are privileged, hallelujah, to be light in this sin-darkened world. Church, the Lord has need of us today. Huh? Our greatest contributions to the world can be summarized today, that Jesus has need of us today to remember, to allow our memories to reflect, that to remember we were once lost, uh, but God came as Jesus uh, to rescue us, to give us eternal life. Uh, we are to be optimistic, for Jesus is our hope. We can be confident today, church, expecting, believing that God unconditionally loves us, that we can know God alone is trustworthy. My brothers and my sisters, the Lord has need of us uh, to exercise a uh, mustard seed faith. Uh, for the Bible says, uh, without faith, uh, it is impossible uh, to please God. True faith uh, means our hearts have been changed. And as changed hearts, we can demonstrate God through our actions. The Lord has need of us today to demonstrate that we are family, for family is loving and family is supporting of one another, even when it's not easy to do. For we can demonstrate to and with each other. We are to inspire one another and each other, forgiving one another and sharing with those in need today. My brothers and my sisters, the Lord has need of us today to be responsible people. And as born again believers, uh, 
in Jesus the Christ. We are to love the Lord thy God with all of our hearts and with all of our souls, with all of our minds, hallelujah, and with all of our strength. We are to love each other as we love ourselves. And so then we can sing as Fanny J. Crosby him sing says for us to do today. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, oh earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Oh, hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to his holy name. Father, we thank you for your word today that has gone forth with your power. And we know your word will not return unto you void, but the Bible says your word will prosper into whomsoever it is sent. And so today, Father, we offer Christ to people today who still are not saved and we offer Christ to you only you my brothers and sisters know if you've ever realized and recognized that you are a sinner and that you need Jesus and that the only way to spend eternity with God you have to believe in Jesus that Jesus is the Son of God for John 3 16 says for God so loved the world that God gave his only begotten son and that whosoever believes in Jesus the Christ will be saved do you believe it today I invite you today come to Jesus come to Jesus come to Jesus right now right now oh, come to Jesus come to Jesus just now Jesus will save us he will save us Jesus will save us. He will save us right now. Right. Oh, he will save us. Jesus will save us today. I trust that you have invited Jesus to come into your heart today. For none of us know the day nor the hour that Jesus will return. And the word of God says he's returning for a church without spot, without wrinkle. Won't you believe his word today and experience the joy of Jesus that you too can sing, hail him. Hail him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. And now unto God, who is able to keep us from falling. <laughs> unto God, who is able to grant exceeding abundance in all that we can ever ask or think. May God's grace, God's love, God's peace, hallelujah, God's joy be with you and you and you today and forever. Go forth, my brothers and my sisters, knowing that you are unconditionally loved.